Lithium metal batteries have always looked good on paper. Really, really good. Crazy energy density, very lightweight, perfect for long range EVs to replace NMC chemistry, but they've died too quickly to be useful. CATL may have just fixed that. CATL, the world's biggest battery maker, has just announced a genuine breakthrough in lithium metal battery technology. And this isn't one of those uh, maybe one day stories in, in a year or two, uh, it might happen. The work they've done here moves lithium metal from a lab idea into something that actually looks uh, very, very serious and very manufacturable. So what did they crack? What have they actually done and achieved? They've managed to double the lifespan of a lithium metal prototype while holding an extremely high energy density over, well over 500 watt hours per kilogram. So that is a number that we normally associate with aviation batteries, not everyday electric cars. So if you took a battery like that and placed it into something like a Model 3 or a BYD SEAL, even just the 70 kilowatt hour pack, then you'd be looking at a thousand kilometers of, of you know, real world range, 620 miles, something like that, without needing to make the pack any bigger in the same size battery pack. So that is how big of a shift this is. Let's jump into it because there's actually a lot more to it. I've barely scratched the surface. Hello folks, I'm Ben Alexander. Thank you so much for uh, joining me. These are the channel members and uh, these people support and give me a couple of dollars a month. So thank you very much to these people. And uh, they also, some people buy me a coffee, which is a very nice thing. You are also able to just buy me a coffee. I've been reading through the, you know, CATL's latest research. I literally spend so many hours every week uh, reading CATL's website and their documents and all sorts of other things from other companies. And uh, yeah, their latest research is astonishing, really. And uh, this one genuinely feels important because of, uh, you know, if they're talking about it publicly, then basically what that means is it's usually, uh, it's on the path. To production. So they don't announce science experiments usually, CATL. They announce things that they intend to build. So that's when they publicly avow things like this. So why is this a big deal? Lithium metal batteries aren't the same as lithium iron phosphate or NMC packs you and I normally talk about every day, basically every other day. LFP sits at 165 to 210 watt hours per kilogram. Solid state prototypes from companies like Factorial and Stellantis sit at 375 watt hours per kilogram. This new uh, lithium methyl cell from CATL, well over 500. Amazing, really. So that's roughly triple the energy density of a BYD blade battery, what you can get in a Dolphin or an Atto or a Seal now. So here is why that matters. Energy density is the biggest limiting factor on EV range, weight and cost. So if you can double or triple it, then suddenly EVs don't need huge heavy packs anymore. You could have a compact 60 or 70 kilowatt hour pack doing the job of a 120 kilowatt hour battery pack today. That's why this is a very big deal. That's kind of the, the golden nugget. That's what everyone kind of wants. So the issue has always been cycle life actually, and lithium metal has amazing energy density and uh, then they die quickly. So that's, there's always a catch, there? there's always a catch. And I'm sure it will, uh, you know, it will still be in vehicles though. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be in some vehicles in five or 10 years time. So it's worth considering. CATL's prototype survived 483 full cycles while holding the full energy density and then it started to creep down. So for a battery like this, this is really impressive when you dig into the chemistry. So if CATL can double cycle life once, I'm fairly sure they can do it again because that didn't take them very long to figure that out. I reckon that with their track record as well, because with uh, when we talk about CATL, when they say they will do something, they basically literally always do it. It's an incredible thing, really. They've got a brilliant track record and they're one of the most reliable companies in this regard. So they said openly, this was a result of a new electrolyte design. And electrolyte optimization is uh, the kind of thing that companies like CATL can iterate extremely fast, really, really, really fast, especially when they start feeding the data into AI-based modeling systems. And uh, this is obviously not the first time I've heard of a breakthrough from AI uh, with regards to battery chemistry. This is not theoretical. This is the exact same development pattern we saw with uh, LFP chemistry a few years ago. Uh, steady improvements followed by a commercial breakthrough. Now it's in buses and cars and houses all around the world, probably within the space of six or seven years. So CATL, how did they solve this, this massive issue? Everyone assumed lithium metal sales failed because the solvent broke down 
or uh, or basically dead lithium built up within the cell. CATL used something called quantitative mapping to track what is actually happening inside the cell in real time. They found that over 70% of the electrolytes salt was being consumed by the time the cell reached the end of its life. So that is basically, that's what killed the battery, not the solvent, not the dendrites, not the dead lithium. So it was simply running out of electrolyte. Once they understood that, they built a new electrolyte formulation with different molecular weight, higher conductivity, lower viscosity, and crucially, longer survival under repeated cycling. So that tweak alone literally doubled the life of the prototype. So it's getting pretty crazy what we're seeing these days. Every month, there's something really special happening. So this is exactly why CATL dominates the global battery market at the minute. They don't, you know, they don't just throw chemistry at the problem and uh, try and figure things out without, uh, you know, using science or anything. They analyze the entire failure mechanism, re-engineer it, reverse engineer things sometimes. And once they do that, manufacturing scale kicks in very, very quickly, usually within three or four years. If they double lifespan again, lithium metal becomes very commercially viable and uh, CATL absolutely intend to commercialise it from what they've said and that would have been my guess anyway. They wouldn't be publishing this otherwise. So what does this mean for the future of EVs? To be realistic, these batteries won't be in the next BYD Dolphin or the next Model Y in the next year. That's not happening. CATL are talking about it because they believe it's on track for five years seven years, 10 years maybe, and that's when they think they can deploy it, I believe. Think about where the EV world will be in 2035, for example. Europe bans new combustion cars. Many US states, I think it's 15, 16 states, will uh, have followed that same rule. China will be 90 to 95% electric. Charging speeds of 500 kilowatt will be normal, basically, even though we can do 1300 on some of the higher end vehicles. Energy density of everyday batteries will be around 300, 350 watt hour per kilogram, probably. That's a bit of a guess of mine, but I think it will be about right. A YouTube channel called Kia E Nero Diaries Encore just did a good uh, video about this topic, actually, the other day. You should go check his channel out. Fascinating guy. Uh, if he comments on this, I will pin his comments so that you can find his channel easier. Uh, so he was sort of speculating where it's where the industry is going to be in like 2040 or something like that. So, so if EV battery size stays the same, range doubles with lithium metal range could triple. So it's a pretty incredible thing, really. Imagine a standard sized sedan doing 1,200 kilometers, uh, or you know, weighing a lot less, but it, it can still do 700 kilometers, 800 kilometers on a charge. So that's going to become, I think, a bit of a normal expectation. And once that happens, it becomes very, very hard to argue that petrol cars make sense anymore. I personally don't think petrol or diesel will be around for many, many more years, maybe a few more years. Their days are numbered, obviously. Do you agree? Do you not agree? How long do you think we've got with those? What do you think will happen with classic? What do you think about synthetic fuels? There's so much to be said about that, really. This breakthrough doesn't replace current LFP chemistry or NMC tech it layers on top of it. I think it builds upon it and LFP will still dominate and sodium uh, will dominate as well, the affordable segment in the market. And lithium metal will sit above that, I think, for long range performance and potentially aviation. So it's a natural evolution of the entire battery ecosystem. And uh, I think in, in the next 15 years, it will look very, very different to what it looks like now. It's going to be incredibly different. And CATL looks uh, like they are going to be the closest to actually making it a reality. They are the world's largest battery manufacturer, just in one of their departments in uh, CATL. They've got, just in one of their R&D departments, 200 of those people have uh, a doctorate. They're really, really quick. And of course, now we're in the AI age, so things are going to move really quick. So yeah, this CATL breakthrough is not hype. It's not uh, nonsense. It's a genuine step toward lithium metal batteries becoming something that you and I might actually see in a future EV. Uh, not immediately, obviously, not in the next year, but you know, well within the time frame where EVs will become the global default. That's just what things are. And we petrols are weird. Like, why would you have a petrol? I haven't seen one of those for seven years. And the thing that really stands out most, I think, CATL figured out why lithium metal cells die. They are the first people to do this incredibly big deal. So, uh, you know, probably more, bigger than you can imagine. Once you know that, solving it becomes an engineering problem. And engineering problems, obviously, are what CATL do 
better than almost anybody, basically. What do you think about this? What are your thoughts? Uh, would a 1,000 kilometer EV change the way you think about electric cars? Is it appealing? Is that too much? Maybe it's a bit too much. I wouldn't even need a thousand kilometers really, but I wouldn't say no. And do you think lithium metal will make it into everyday cars or will stay in high-end models, uh, you know, and on and airplanes and things like that? Let me know down below. I read all the comments, obviously. I uh, This is, again, this is one of those videos where I'm really interested to know what people are thinking about it because there's some really interesting things to talk about. So particularly uh, synthetic fuels and that sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Appreciate your time. You're very welcome to subscribe and uh, see you in the next video.